In this video, we are going to do an example of a proof by contradiction. So we'll show how this method works. So if I'm trying to show if p then q some implication by contradiction, we first assume that what we want to show q, our conclusion, we assume that that's false. Assume the conclusion is false. And then we'll show that this leads to some contradiction, something impossible happening, like one equals zero, or a positive integer being equal to some negative number, or a rational number being equal to an irrational number. Those would all be contradictions. And if I get a contradiction, that means that our assumption that Q was false, well, that assumption is incorrect. And if that assumption is incorrect, and in other words, wrong, that means that Q is actually true. So what we wanted to show our conclusion would actually be true. So it's kind of a roundabout way of arriving at the conclusion. So let's look at an example. I want to prove that there are no positive integer solutions to x squared minus y squared equals one. Okay, so let's try to prove this directly. Well, I don't have much to go on here. So maybe what I can say is, let's let x and y be positive integers. So I'm going to let them be elements of z plus. That's my symbol for positive integers. Ultimately, what I want to show, which I'll abbreviate as WTS for want to show, I would want to show that, well, if x and y are positive integers, then they are not going to work in this equation. So I would want to show that x squared minus y squared would not, would not be equal to one. But if all I'm given is that x and y are positive integers, I don't really have equations for x and y to work with. It's unclear how I'm going to reach this thing, which has, has an equation. So unclear how to get to this. Unclear how to get to this. And that's an indicator that a direct proof isn't going to work here. OK, so here's a strategy tip for how I could recognize this based on the wording. So often when we're trying to show that there are no something, in this example, no positive integer solutions, that's often difficult to do directly. And that's a tip off to try a proof by contradiction, where we, again, we start by assuming the conclusion is false. So whatever it is that we're trying to prove, the Q, we assume that's false. And that show, then we want to show that that leads to a contradiction, something impossible happening. So in our example, if I'm trying to prove that there are no positive integer solutions to that equation, I'm going to assume the opposite. I'm going to assume that there are, there are uh, positive integers x and y such that x squared minus y squared equals 1. OK, so we are assuming the opposite of what we wanted to show to try to get a contradiction. So let's do some scratch work and think about how we'll, how we'll get that. So in my scratch work, we think about what it is that we know slash the things we get to assume that are true. And the things that we get to assume are true are that x and y are positive integers. So they're elements of z plus. And we also are assuming now that x squared minus y squared is equal to 1. We are assuming that for the sake of contradiction. We're going to hope that that leads to a contradiction. So in terms of what I want to show, well, I want to show some contradiction. I don't know what it is just yet. <laughs> we'll probably have to do some, some manipulations with this and show that it leads to some sort of impossibility. Typically, when I work out the proof, I would probably do some more scratch work, like working with this equation, trying to figure out exactly what the contradiction is going to be. But let's try to do that directly in the proof, just for the sake of time and, and trying to be concise here. Okay, so let me separate out the assumptions from what it is that I want to show. And let's dive into the proof. So I start off the proof by indicating that we're doing a proof by contradiction. So we assume for the sake of contradiction, assume for the sake of contradiction, and now I indicate what it is that we are assuming. So assume for the sake of contradiction that there exists x and y 
that are elements of z plus. So we're assuming that there are positive integers such that x squared minus y squared will be equal to 1. OK, so start it off by writing down what it is that we assume is true. In this case, it's what I'm assuming for the sake of contradiction. It doesn't really look like I have much in the way of you know definitions to break down in terms of this like we have in previous examples about like something being even or odd. I think we're ready to do our manipulations. We have this equation. Let's try to do some manipulations with it. So x squared minus y squared equals 1. That implies, if we factor this, that x minus y times x plus y is equal to 1. OK. So we have these two factors multiplying to be 1. Because x and y are integers, that means when you subtract them or add them, that's going to be an integer. OK, nice. So since x and y are integers, I don't even need to say that they're positive integers. The fact that they are integers, this implies, this means that x minus y and x plus y are integers as well. They're also in z. OK, so now we know we have two integers multiplying to get us 1. But there's only two ways that that can happen. It's either if both of these things are 1 or both of them are negative 1. So let's consider those possibilities. OK, so either x minus y is equal to 1 and x plus y equals 1, or x minus y equals negative 1 and x plus y equals negative 1. So we have two systems of equations. In both of these, we can add them together because then the y's cancel. So here I get 2x equals 2. And dividing, I get x equals 1. And I could take this, I could plug it back into either equation. And if I do that, we get this implies that y equals 0. So this arrow that I'm writing here is just a mathematical notation for this implies. This implies. OK, so if I do the same thing for my other system of equations, let's add it together. The y's will cancel. I get 2x equals negative 2. Dividing, I get x equals negative 1. And if I plug that in into either equation, we'll get that y equals 0. OK, so at this point, we got a contradiction because we assumed at the beginning that x and y were positive integers. But in the first solution, y is not a positive integer. 0 is not a positive integer. And in the second solution, both of these are not positive integers. That is a contradiction. So let's indicate that. So in both solutions, in both solutions, there, let me say, in both solutions, either x or y is not a positive integer, which is a contradiction, which is a contradiction, because both of them are supposed to be positive integers. OK. So this means our assumption was false. This means our assumption that x and y are positive integers, so they are elements of z plus, is false. Our assumption is false. So we've identified what the contradiction is, and now we're ready to state the conclusion. So it follows, it follows that so we assume that x and y are positive integers that satisfy this equation. If that's false, that means that there are no, there are no positive integer solutions to x squared minus y squared equals 1. 
And that completes the proof. What I want to end this video by kind of just summarizing about this structure of the proof is, notice that we start off our proof by contradiction by assuming the opposite of what we want to show. Okay, and then we either use definitions of what that means or do some manipulations. That's the next part of the proof. After that, we are hoping to reach our contradiction. Once we reach our contradiction, then we get to say that the actual conclusion had to be true because we started off by assuming the conclusion was false. If we reach a contradiction, that, that, then that means the conclusion is true and that completes the proof.